So for me, that's actually the biggest factor that seems like a non-factor in all this. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a bit about lifestyle and a lot about personal finance and investment. In this video, I'm going to be throwing it back to my very first video on personal finance where I shared with you how I invest in the US stock market through equity funds run by Philippine banks. Now, since that first video, I actually learned about different platforms and different apps that are available. But for this video, this is actually a long time coming. I'm finally going to be comparing the different US equity UITFs that are being offered by the different Philippine banks. Hopefully, you come out of this knowing which are those better and which of those that are probably not put together too well. And I'm going to be sharing with you my recommendations, which I think you should be investing in. This video will be your ultimate guide to US equity UITFs that are being offered by Philippine banks. So before getting into the details, please note that I'm only including UITFs here offered by Philippine banks. So those funds being offered by non-banks, technology platforms, and other investment companies I'm not including them, so I have a lot of those videos already in the past. You can view them later on. This time, it will be purely based on the Philippine banks and their UITFs. Please note also that I've only included U.S. equity funds that are most comparable because some banks actually have more than one U.S. equity fund. So for purpose of simplicity, I've gotten their best offers. So if I miss out on some, my apologies for that. Anyway, I'm not a financial professional, but I do have a lot of years in investing and seeing these different funds. So as always, take what I say with a little grain of salt. And ultimately, it's still up to you to do your research and find out what investment instrument would really fit your personal lifestyle. For this video, I'm going to be talking about the US equity funds from BPI, BDO, Metro Bank, Security Bank, PNB, and RCBC. So those are six banks that we're looking at today. There are about five criteria that I'm looking at. So I'm going to be comparing these banks based on these criteria. Number one would be the trust fee, the per annum percentage that the bank actually gets from your investments. Number two would be the minimum investment needed and the subsequent top ups that you would need to be able to invest further in the set funds. Number three would be the target fund. And number four, which personally to me is a minor criteria, would be the minimum holding period and the number of days as processing period when you actually invest and withdraw from the said funds. So are you guys ready? So let's start with the trust fee. Highest here would be BDO and PNB at 1% per annum. This would be followed by three banks at 0.75%, which is Metro Bank, RCBC, and BPI. Now the best of breed here in terms of the lowest trust fees per annum would be Security Bank at 0.71%. You can actually get this down to 0.51%, but the caveat there would be for you to avail of Security Bank's 0.51% trust fee. The minimum investment is actually $5,000, roughly 250,000 pesos, with minimum top up of $1,000 for your subsequent investments. And with that, that brings us to our second criteria, which is the minimum investment and subsequent top-ups. So excluding security banks offer for high rollers, the bank with the highest hurdle in terms of minimum investment and top-up is actually PNB at 1,000 US dollars for minimum investment and 1,000 US dollars as well for every subsequent investment. Aww. This would be followed by BPI and security bank for their lower tier offer so the minimum investment for BPI and Security Bank is $1,000 and $500. Following this would be BDO at a minimum of $500, but their top up is no different. It's also at $500. So as much as it's easier to buy into, each step of the way will also be $500. So it's still a little bit challenging. So the top two here would actually be Metro Bank and RCBC for Metro Bank. The minimum investment is at $500 and $100 for subsequent investments. And for RCBC, it's actually at a minimum of $200 with subsequent investments of only $100. So for this criteria, RCBC is really ahead. Do you guys have a favorite yet? Okay, so let's move on to criteria number three, which is the target fund. Now for many people, this might be the one single most important detail. And I understand that, but to me, I'm not entirely focused on this. I see this as a big criteria, but I wouldn't completely rely on the target fund as my main basis. So just as a refresher, 
these equity funds actually have a target fund and that fund is being run by global investment companies. For this criteria, I actually segregated the banks into two different segments. The first would be those targeting the S&P 500 and the other would be those that are not solely focused on the S&P 500. Recalling again that first video that I did, the S&P 500 is sort of the benchmark, the gold standard made up of 500 large cap corporations. These companies have been carefully picked, curated, and the flag bearer, so to speak, of the US stock market. So for most people in the world, we're really looking at the S&P 500 as an indicator to see how stocks are doing as a whole. So which of the funds from the banks are using the S&P 500 as their target fund? First, there's BPI with their target fund as the Spider S&P 500 ETF. And there's also Metro Bank and RCBC which have the same target fund as iShare Core S&P ETF between Spider and iShares. Is there really a difference? Well, the funds are being run by their different investment companies. So there may be a little nuances, a little difference here and there. But generally, these funds that target the S&P 500 would be very similar in how they perform. So let's move on to the non S&P 500 target funds. For Security Bank, the target fund is the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. For those of you who have watched a lot of finance videos, especially abroad, you know that Vanguard is probably the most premium and the most ideal S&P 500 fund to put your money into. But for Security Bank, they are investing in the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, which is the VTI, which is different from the VOO or the Vanguard S&P 500. Now, what's the difference? The Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF is made up of over 3,000 companies, small and medium cap size companies as well. So in many ways, it's actually more indicative of the performance of the whole stock market. But since they have small to medium cap size companies, they are in many ways riskier as well. But anyway, over 80% of the VTI is actually the S&P 500 and the remaining 20% would actually be the small and medium cap companies. Similar to this would be the target fund of BDO, which is the Wells Fargo Worldwide Fund US All Cap. And the difference this time would be this is run by Wells Fargo, while that of Security Bank is run by Vanguard. And lastly, the most different from this set would be the target fund of PNB, the Leg Mason Clear Bridge Sustainability Leaders Fund. I'm not really sure why PNB took on a fund that is more on the sustainability play. Maybe they are looking to be more socially responsible. I'm not really sure, but um, good for them. Out of all these, that's probably the most different. So those are the varying target funds that these banks are patterned after. As a side note to these target funds, I actually looked at historical performance as well. But it's a little hard because a lot of the banks actually haven't had the fund in their portfolio for too long. It's a little hard to have an apples to apples comparison. For PNB, there's no historical performance just yet. For RCBC, they've only been able to show their performance as of the last three months, which is a little over 4%. So it's really hard to compare. Security Bank and BPO have been around in the last two to three years, while BPI and Metro Bank have been around a little longer. Metrobank's performance in the last five years is a cumulative return of over 68%, while for BPI, the return is at 70% in the last three years. But generally for me, we're looking at the US market anyway as a whole, so the variances would be very little. You guys can actually look up their target fund and how it's performed in the last five, 10 years. That's what you can do if you really wanted to look it up. But for me, the variances, especially in the long run, wouldn't really matter as much. Actually, the other criteria and factors that would really affect your investment based on the prerequisites and management of your fund by the local bank. Okay, so let's move on to the last criteria. This would be the criteria on the minimum holding period and the processing period. So generally, the funds don't have a holding period except for PNB, which has a 30-day holding period. And for Metrobank, there is a seven-day holding period. Since these investments are anyway for long-term plays, the holding period really shouldn't matter. Lastly would be the processing period. Generally, the processing period would be up to seven banking days, which in that case would be Security Bank. Security Bank would have the longest processing period to redeem your funds, while the others play around between four and five banking days. So again, this is a criteria that I don't really consider as a big factor. Again, looking at it from a long-term investment perspective. Before moving forward, this video is brought to you by Skillshare.com. 
Just kidding, I'm not sponsored. I forgot to include one bank in this video. Not totally my fault because this bank's website has been down. A friend just got back to me about my needed information. So what I almost missed in this video is East West Bank. Now quickly, East West Bank has the best trust fees at 0.5% per annum. Its minimum investment starts at $500 and top ups of $200 each time. While the minimum holding period is at 30 days and processing period is at 5 days. For the target fund, I'm not sure what it is since the website is again still down. But what I know is that it is also a fund that's targeting the S&P 500. So with the lowest trust fees and a slightly lower top up, I would consider East West Bank's fund in the top 3. Now let's get back onto that video and this video is brought to you by NordVPN. Just kidding. There's one more criteria, I didn't mention it earlier because it's actually uniform across the board. You won't even find this in the investment prospectus in the different websites. But since the funds are in US dollar denomination, it's a prerequisite to have a dollar account. For you to open an account, the minimum average daily balance must not be lower than $500. And again, this would be the same for all banks. So yes, you heard that right. You need to have $500 in your dollar savings account. So for me, that's actually the biggest factor that seems like a non-factor in all this. So what this means is that for you to be able to invest in these US equity funds, recall what I mentioned earlier about the minimum investment at the same time, having $500 extra just to sit on your savings account. From what I've shared and gathered, at 0.75% per annum for the trust fees and $200 as a minimum investment, it seems that RCBC would be the best. But as we recall, the minimum of $500 as your average daily balance for your dollar account, that would mean that even if you only need $200 to start your investment in the US equity fund that is offered by RCBC, what you actually need is $700. And from those $700, 500 goes into your dollar savings account, which you can't touch, and $200 would be your investment in the RCBC US equity fund. So yes, I think that's a little bit of the downside there. You're actually putting more of your money just to sit in a savings account that isn't even interest bearing, by the way. With these hurdles in place, the best US equity back fund for me is actually something that I haven't mentioned just yet. To circumvent this challenge of having $500 sitting in your account, one of the banks actually offered the same fund in peso denomination, which makes things a lot easier because we already have our peso accounts. Since we're earning in peso here and having to do away with changing your peso to dollar, opening a dollar account, the best fund here would be the BPI US Equity Fund because they're actually offering the same fund but just available in your pesos. Now again, this isn't sponsored. In fact, when I invested in the BPI US Equity Fund years ago, I had to do it in dollars. So yes, I still have $500 just sitting in my BPI dollar account. The peso denomination feature wasn't available then. If it were already available then, for sure that's where I would have invested. While the minimum investment stands at essentially $1,000, or 50,000 pesos. The subsequent top ups that BPI requires is only at 10,000 pesos, meaning that they even better their offer because in the dollar account, it's a minimum of $1,000 and top up of $500. Isn't that a little high you might ask? Well, again, with RCBC, you need $700, that's 35,000 pesos, and you're only investing $200, which is essentially 10,000 pesos. So out of the 35,000 pesos, you only have 10,000 pesos invested. While with BPI, even though it's higher at 50,000 pesos, at least your money is more hardworking since you've invested in the S&P 500, you've invested in the fund, and you have a higher probability to be able to make this back sooner and with higher returns. So that's about it, guys. For me personally, I think the BPI US equity fund in peso denomination gives you the best value, while a close second for me would be RCBC. But again, what stands in the way is the minimum to maintain your dollar account. So yes, that's just my opinion. Do you guys agree? Again, we've only covered US equity UITFs currently being offered by banks here. We've excluded other investment companies, mutual funds, and ETFs that you can directly buy into. If you want to know more about how this fares in comparison, when putting it side by side with other mutual funds 
or ETFs that you can directly purchase. I'll save that for a future video because this video is pretty long already. Let me know in the comment section if you want to get that from me soon. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing!